Are we ready for a fun philosophical conversation? Let's 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 talk about a, a couple of philosophical things. Teleporters, and this is totally not just because I've been watching Star Trek recently. Um, but let's talk about teleporters for a second. Okay. Now I'm sure everybody has that fantasy that one day we're gonna get teleporters. Uh, and when we get those teleporters, we're going to be able to go from one end of the Earth to the other, or even up to the ISS, um, or even the moon, or a Mars colony, or whatever. And we'll be able to go to those areas safely, and it'll be great, because instead of having to deal with costly space travel, we can just beam ourselves there. So, let's talk about, trigger warning, suicide. So what is, a, what is a teleporter supposed to do in science fiction? There's a couple of ways that it's argued in science fiction. One of them is that the teleporter deconstructs you into energy, which is what it does in Star Trek, fires you out, and then reassembles you elsewhere based on the data. In fact, actually, even in Star Trek, they can use image data of a person to reconstruct them. So what happens when you're deconstructed into energy? Well, I can tell you what ha I can tell you a function that happens right now that deconstructs you into energy. It's called being digested. <laughs> being eaten. That deconstructs you into energy. When you're deconstructed, do you die? I would argue that yeah, pretty much. Even if we assemble a thing at the other end that, that looks like you, speaks like you, has all of your memories. But I'm pretty certain that whatever is on the other end is not you. The you that exists died the minute you walked into that teleporter. The minute you got separated into a thousand tiny bits and reassembled back together somewhere else. Now, this is because we have a problem of consciousness to deal with. Consciousness does not matter, therefore it would not be able to transfer from one end to another. That is if you believe consciousness is a thing as opposed to an end result. I view consciousness as an end result. An end result of the synapses in your brain and those functions leads to a phenomenon we know as consciousness. Just as I don't believe we have free will, but we have a functional illusion of one. But that does not move over there. If, if, conscious, if consciousness is indeed separate from the brain it would not be able to f uh, fire through this teleporter. Which would mean one of two things would happen. Either consciousness is an emergent property that would come up from this individual once they are fired over there as energy, which creates another problem we'll get into in just a second, or a, a being would be assembled at the other end that has all the biological functions of you, but no consciousness. It would just be a, It'd just be dead. It just be over there and completely brain dead because the consciousness couldn't follow through. Depending on your view of consciousness, one of these things is going to happen. Now, likely, if we had this teleporter that fired with energy, what's another op what's another thing that could happen? Well, if a teleporter works the way that it does in something like Star Trek, and it ba it bases everything based on an image of you, and then reconstructs that image elsewhere with all your memories. What's to stop that from just having a nicely charged battery because you're functionally just turning into energy, going into the battery and being fired out, out elsewhere? What's to stop you from being that battery or something else powering that battery and it assembling a new version of you elsewhere without deconstructing you? Because if I'm right and the consciousness just pops up over there and you functionally die then the being that's over... There's there's nothing saying that the being that's over there could not be constructed, basically cloned. Not cloned in the scientific sense, but cloned functionally over there. This is, this is a copy of you. Now, there's another issue with this. Another issue here. And it's not just that, you know, you, you die. But we also have to talk about something called the ship of Theseus. Now, if I take you, if, if instead of taking you apart and reassembling your quarks over there, what if this teleporter takes you apart 
and then uses the quirks that exist in another location to reassemble you. This being has all of your memories, it exists as you, it identifies as you, it has all of that shit. But there's a problem. The being over there was constructed with different material than you. Who's to say that is you? Now, for those of you familiar with the ship of Theseus, this is this is an old philosophical argument with no real answer to it. But if you have a ship, if you have a ship, and you have a, a board that means replacing, you replace the board with a new one. But you hold all of the old pieces in a pile, and board by board you replace the pieces of this ship until every single board of this ship is a new board. And then you construct another ship with all the old boards. Which one was the ship of Theseus? Did it stop being the ship of Theseus when you took away 50% of the boards? What about when you added two to three boards? Does the idea of the ship of Theseus change as soon as it's been fundamentally changed, even by a fraction of a percent, from what the original idea, the ship of Theseus, contained? If you take this to a person, what is the argument that the person who's been assembled over there with different material and matter is you? How would you argue that that's you? And yet, we run into another problem. We run into another issue. It's not just that we can't identify that that thing over there is you. What would be the issue with a society like this? A society that has to use teleporters to get people from one end to another because it's, quite frankly, more cost-effective, probably a lot more environmental. Do you accept that your lot in life is to live for all of seven minutes before you get back in the teleporter from the grocery store and let the next copy of you take over from there? What happens when you learn that that's what happens? Does the society just stop using teleporters even though they're completely functional and the society looks no different from the outside than it is on the inside? Does everybody just adapt to the fact that their life will be in, in micro, uh, in bits of micro? And yet, there's even another problem presented by this, and this is a biological problem. Every few years, your cells die and are replaced with new cells. When that happens, when those new cells come in, how many cells of yours have to be replaced before your you. Another question, what would happen if we took your brain and cut it in half? We know you can have split brain patients. And we took half of your body, removed it, and replaced it with cybernetics, and then took all of the splishy splosh pieces we cut out of you and assembled a new version of you that still had your brain. It has the other half of your brain over there. And those pieces are put together with cybernetics. Which one is you? Which one of these gets to have the identity of you? Now, that's a lot of issues <laughs> to deal with when it comes to something like teleportation. But you also have to consider the fact that with all of this, I'm just one random guy on the internet spouting nonsense. There's nothing saying that all of this science fiction mixed with philosophy actually has any end goal. It just starts conversation. That's all it's here to do. That's all it's supposed to do. I think it's a fun conversation, especially when you consider the fact that the you that exists now is not the you that existed five years ago. Not just because all of your biological cells have been changed, which likely many of them have, but also because if I cloned you right now, made an exact copy of you, and put you two next to each other, you two would be fundamentally different people. Because your experience may have been identical to theirs, but as soon as you are standing on a different side to them, your experience of experiencing each other is going to be different. Because you're having that experience from the left-hand side, and they're having that experience from the right-hand side. These two people have now been separated because they have one divergent experience from the other. But if that is the case, if that is enough to separate people as individuals, which I believe it is, the minute you've gained a new memory, the minute you've engaged in a new action, 
you have one more experience than the previous iteration of you. That previ is that previous version of you now obsolete? Does its identity no longer function because that you does not exist? The you that had all of your experiences up to year 27 ceases existing as soon as you have all those experiences plus a single second. And if all of those hold true, if all of that is a, is, is a giant mumbo-jumbo pile of shit, what happens when we apply all of those questions to the idea of teleportation? The you that exists on that other side has your identity, your memories, your everything. Whether it's made of your energy, your quirks, or quirks assembled from somewhere else, this problem of identity never goes away. None of it goes away. There's also an uncertainty principle that says that you don't know if you are actually alive. You have no way of knowing that anybody but you is real. You can only know that you are real, and, and even then, it's just kind of a best guess. You have no way of knowing if all of your memories up until this exact moment have been fabricated and your life just started this very second. There's no way of knowing these things. We just functionally operate as if they aren't. And if that's the case, what happens with a society that has no way of knowing that the person who appeared on the other end of a teleporter is the same person who walked through, but pragmatically has to function as if they are at all times? What kind of a chaotic nightmare society is that, where people only get to live a handful of days and every time they're teleported they die? But a new life is created each time. Fun stuff to think about. Fun stuff to ponder. Uh, I've been meaning to do a video just on the idea of teleportation and all the philosophical shit that gets kind of caught in it. Uh, but I but I never did because I'm lazy. But now that I'm doing this as a cut-up live stream format, I can actually do the stream of thought stuff a little easier. So let me know what you think in the comments section. There's got to be a lot of interesting perspectives here.